So I was listening to the ASPS um, lecture last week and they referenced this paper and fundamental optic principles of plastic surgery. So this was an editorial written by Rourke in 2017 that um, goes over the principles. So um, basically it first described nearly five centuries ago, um, but they remain paramount to optic success today. And then if uh, we adhere to central tenets of reconstruction, the modern surgery lies on instant knowledge of native anatomy and technical finesse to restore form and function. So all things you know about plastic surgery, so for the history, um, it was Frenchman and Bois Carre that was the first to define the set of reconstructed principles in 1564. And then these weren't really changed or no one else really commented until Millard and uh, when he presented Sir Harold Gilley's Ten Commandments Plastic Surgery in 1950. And then Millard went on um, a few years later to define 33 fundamental principles of plastic surgery and his principalization of plastic surgery. So here's a, here's a nice chart of the original principles by Pere and Gillies and Millard. I'm not going to go through all these. I'm going to go through the ones that Rourke um, describes in his most recent paper. So starting at the beginning, um, he says principle one is plan carefully and precisely before you operate. So Smith so basically saying the most important part of operation is the plan itself. And you should always have a backup plan because you don't really know what you're going to get into until you're in there sometimes. Principle two, he states, is ensure that your operative goals are in alignment with the patients preoperatively. So he recommends you get the patient's top three goals or concerns they wish to address and then be honest to the patient yourself of what your limitations are and how well you can address these goals. You know, it's in the age of today, um, basically you should document them in the chart, not only so you can remember them when you, before you go to the operating room, but also for medical legal documentation of what they were hoping for. Principle three, when in doubt, don't. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you are hesitating on doing something, um, you probably have a reason in your, from your training or your experience that's making you hesitate. So he says, let your training or experience and expertise guide you with this one. Um, principle four, inside skin under tension, close with no tension. This is something we all talk about all the time. Um, allows for more precision and minimizes tissue trauma, which allows for better healing and results. And if you're about to incise and you don't feel comfortable, stop and readjust so you can make the best cut. So body position or hand position. And one point that he notes in here is address dog ears in the operating room because they rarely subside afterwards. So he thinks if you can address it all at the same time, it's better than going back later to fix the dog ears. Um, principle five, close wounds in layers and approximate wound edges meticulously. Um, Kind of interesting point. He said 90% of how plastic or patients heal is genetic. Um, but however, that 10% is based on the surgeon, and we can all appreciate that part as surgeons. Um, also, something we talk about occasionally is approximate, but don't strangulate the wound edges for best healing. Um, principle six, closed dead space. Um, of course, is the best way for us to prevent hematomas, romas, and other collections, optimize the wound healing. And he says, when in doubt, use a drain um, in between tissue planes to close the dead space if you're unable to suture it in place or attack, um, able to close that dead space otherwise. Principle seven, respect the soft tissue and visualize tissue planes. Um, this goes into Dr. Yu's no touch technique or just not traumatizing the tissue with the pickups. Um, or when you're dissecting, really meticulously go with the plane so you're not causing too much trauma to fell out for better outcomes. Principle eight, achieve, achieve meticulous hemostasis and irrigate the wound before closure. Um, kind of going to what we do with Dr. J. Wu, how we irrigate, get hemostasis, irrigate again, knock off the clots. Also, he mentions that you should always close with the patient normotensive, so um, clots aren't ruptured later, basically causing hematomas that you didn't see while in the operating room. And then drains, again, do not prevent hematomas. This is something that comes up often within the review books. So I'm not sure about in-service exams or not. Principle nine, uh, repeat and refine your technique continuously. Be self-critical is essential becoming an expert. So I think this is something we all can learn about. It's basically um, present your work and your results honestly. So for m &Ms, of course, uh, you just honest and open and accept criticism with an open mind. At the highest level, ego is often what holds one back from achieving his or her best possible results. 
So it's important to talk about your results, your cases, present your work, and have other people comment on your technique. And also don't let your knowledge be what holds you back for, from doing well with operations. Principle 10, missteps in plastic surgery are unforgiving. So a lot of the work we do is extremely fine, um, operations of millimeters. So the smallest errors, whether it's doing a microvascular repair or repairing the eyelid can have catastrophic consequences causing something to clot or damaging the eye if you go too deep. Um, do everything you can to get it right the first time. It's much harder to go back later and repair your work um, once it's all healed in and scarred down. It's, the revision is always harder than the initial repair basically was talking about in that one. Principle 11, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So should you add more tip projection or use larger implants? A lot of times you can, but um, a lot of times it's also what gets plastic surgeons in trouble and what makes other people kind of occasionally look down on our field is when you do things that are kind of ridiculous. Um, consider all aspects of the decision. Always use your best judgment. You know what's right. Um, so sometimes the patient's not always right in what they're asking for. You can help guide them into um, the best decision. Principle 12, if it doesn't look good in the operating table, it won't look any better. So he's basically saying never leave the operating room unless you're happy with the result. Um, sometimes it's not always a perfect result, but it's the best you can do given your best effort. And principle 13, we talk about all the time, apply dressings meticulously. Messy dressings convey sloppiness, and if this is all the patient sees initially, so you could have done the best work, but if they come out bloody or the dressings are sloppy, they think you're a sloppy surgeon initially. Um, principle 14, keep the patient's family informed during surgery. Again, it's probably something we all could do a better job of. Open communication lines build trust with the patients and their family. So we should always go out and talk to the family after the operation in a timely manner. And then prim principle 15, um, another good one. Under promise, over deliver. Honesty is the best policy. You are a surgeon, not a magician. You work with a scalpel, not a wand. So you advise the patient, you'll do your very best, but you can never guarantee a result. It kind of sets them at a level where, so they know what to expect and are happy if it's better than what they expected, rather than you promise them something that's not as good as they expected from your promise. Also medicine, or plastic surgery is a field of medicine, as we all know, and it de demands the utmost honesty and integrity. Honesty and integrity will gain the confidence not only your patients, but your colleagues as well. So those were his 15 principles, and then I, added Kobe Bryant's 16th principle. If you're afraid to fail, then you're probably going to fail. So it's always better to be prepared and go in with confidence rather than be in a case and be worrying about failing the whole time. So that's a quick review of um, this editorial Dr. Rourke um, wrote in 2017. I thought it was kind of an interesting paper. Um, a lot of it's basic that we already know, but I think it's something we can always review and continue to learn from as well. Um, any comments from any of the attendings or anybody on that? Yeah, there's one other principle which I read, the, not in this paper. Uh, they're talking about one of the principles is uh, don't do something today as an emergency if it's something which can wait. So that's yeah. the, we have a plastic sense. There's no reason to rush and do stuff. Take advantage of time because you can have your plans in place. You can probably more likely to do the appropriate operation or operate inter op appropriate intervention. Yeah, they actually mentioned that in this paper. It's uh, number eight in the Gillies and Millard, which is thou shalt not do today what thou canst put off till tomorrow. The way they interpreted it in this paper was not really what he meant, I don't think. So they, that was one they said they didn't agree with, but the way you presented it makes a lot more sense for that um, point. I think one of the ones that I find most useful is it never looks any better when you're off of the table, hoping that it's going to somehow, you know, solve whatever you see as a, a, a problem with your repair, reconstruction, flap, whatever is unlikely to occur. So you have your best shot at work um, when you're actually in the operating room and everything's set up which is sometimes a challenge when you're fatigued and you've been working at something two or three times and it's still not the way you want it to be. Yeah, by the way, that's uh, those are called the 10 commandments of plastic surgery. The Millard's uh, 1950 paper, that was when he was a fellow with Harold Gillis. Yes.
Any other comments or principles we should be living by from the other attendings? One I know from general surgery is don't be afraid to ask for help or a second opinion. Yeah, I think that's a terrific, uh, terrific thing. I mean, particularly as you're developing your practice, I mean, it's still not uncommon for me to come up with something I haven't seen for either, either before or for a really long time. So 